What's up, everybody? I'm Ryan from Fight Fluency, and today we have a very special guest on the platform today. He's 7-0 as a pro with six finishes. It's Mitch Ramirez. Mitch, how you doing, sir? Good, man. How you doing? I'm pretty good. And you know what? Even though you're not in the UFC as of right now, you're part of some pretty big drama when it comes to the UFC. So, of course, we had to get your side of the story when it came to this ultimate fighter drama. Could yeah. you fill us in from what happened? Because it was big news on our side of the community when we heard that Conor McGregor kicked out, essentially, like a couple fighters from the show. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, I'll give you the, the rundown of it, I guess. So, uh, not going to talk about, you know, my experience, but, you know, for me, uh, I was told, okay, you know, you've been selected uh, about a month before we, you know, we're supposed to. This, so this is like turn of the new year, like beginning of January you know, Hey, you know, you're being considered, you know, we like you. Okay. You, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be brought on that kind of stuff. Got sent like camera equipment, got sent all this kind of stuff. And I worked my ass off to be honest with you. I, I think I, I filmed 50 gigs of video, dude. Like I went nuts. Like I, I really, you know, wanted this opportunity. You know, I've been dreaming my whole life of finally getting this opportunity. I've been working really hard for it. So I, I really, I really pushed myself and I worked hard. And then uh, beginning of February, they're like, Hey, look, um, we need you to go to this hotel and quarantine it's going to be McGregor, all this kind of stuff. So obviously you're pretty hyped. Like that's going to be a lot of views, a lot of cool stuff. Uh, so I was like, all right, sweet, man. And I went, I went nuts. I mean, even when they sent me the, the camera stuff, man, I went nuts. I, I literally dropped everything. I basically stopped working. I, I just went crazy. Luckily, you know, some of my uh, people, my, my, uh, one of my, my sponsors definitely really helped me out there to be able to chase this thing. And, you know, long story short, man, I, I, I spent a lot of money. I did a lot of things. <laughs> worked my ass off, ended up going to the hotel to quarantine, right? They wanted us there for a week, right? Quarantine and kind of see how you, how you deal with, you know, being, being by yourself. And we ended up being there for 10 days. Right. So, and uh, while we were there, they kind of were like, Hey, look, you know, a couple of you guys might be alternates just so you know. So some of us were like, okay, you know, let's make sure and really put our foot, our best foot forward. And uh, I did, man, I, I did my ESPN interviews, Octagon interview, UFC interview, all this stuff. And uh, ESPN did, did an extra 15 minutes with me. We were supposed to do a short one. We did a long one. Um, those of you who haven't heard my story, it's a pretty crazy long one. Uh, Adaptive Leaders podcast, I just did an hour and a half on that. Um, I'm, I'm episode 27 if you guys want to hear more about that and some of the things I've been through in my life to get here. Um, but there, there no, there no, uh, it was no small task to be where I'm at. And being, in the, and, and being there, you know, at the end of that 10-day period, I was, I was told that I made the cut. And I was like, hey, look, you know, you made the cut. You know, you did a great job in all your interviews. Tell tell everybody goodbye. You'll see them in six weeks kind of thing. So I'm obviously hyped, bro. Like, you know, that's a big deal. And uh, I called everybody. You know, I called my mom. I called my people. I'm like, dude, I, I got told they're coming to get my phone at like, you know, I think it was 7 p.m. Um, so, you know, I'll talk to you guys soon. You know, and when we got this, I'm, I'm going in. And uh, seven comes around, nothing. Eight comes around, nothing. I'm like, this – Starting to get a little bit worried. Nine o'clock. Now I'm real worried. And then around like 10 p.m., like late in the evening, uh, one of the producers came in and he just he looked upset, man. He looked I, I, I believed him, dude, his, his his body language, what he was telling me sounded like the truth. Um, and what he told me is that Connor landed today and he brought two of his guys with him. He's demanding they're on the show. He has the prospects. Uh, unfortunately, you have the least amount of fights on your record. So you're being replaced. And to me, dude, that was just such a blow, dude, such a, such a nut shot, honestly, of just like, and I remember sitting there and being like stunned and being like, is there anything we can do? Like, what the, f you know? And they're like, we're sorry, dude. You know, it's, it, it is what it is. It's Connor. And like, and here's the thing is I get it. I understand who Connor McGregor is. I understand the way business works. Okay. And, you know, I'm, I'm smart enough to understand, you know, that it wasn't personal, personal, but it is personal because it's my life, dude. And it's everything I've ever, and it's everything I've put myself into for these last, my whole life, bro, honestly. So, you know, uh, ended up leaving the hotel and just being bummed out. Next morning, wake up, crazy staff infection had taken over my leg from some of this, from the training room equipment that we were sharing in this hotel. And I was in the hospital for five days with a crazy staff infection. Honestly, dude, I only got cleared to train a month ago. And then I went to UFC I think it was two, what, 87 on this last one uh, with, with my girlfriend, Cynthia Calvillo, because she was fighting in Miami. So I went with her for two weeks to Miami, didn't train, right? And was like thinking, you know, I, you know, I, but I wanted to fight. Anyway, I get back from Miami. They're like, you want to fight in two weeks, new weight class. I'm out of shape. 
but I'm seeing all this, you know, ultimate fighter stuff getting posted and it's, it, it, you know, pissed me off, man. Like I want, I want my shot too, dude. Like, uh, I understand the way business works, but I put a lot of time and money into, you know, trying to be an asset for the, for, for the UFC and for the TV show. You know, I did everything. And even the producer was like, dude, you went harder than anybody. I showed up dude with a bag full of training equipment for my room. I mean, spent thousands of dollars on clothes for interviews I mean, I bought a freaking inflatable bathtub so I could do Epsom salt baths because I had a, only had a shower in my hotel room. Like, I went nuts, dude. Like, I really did. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people in these comments like, oh, this sounds like entitlement. It's like, no, dude. Like, I wasn't like – they didn't just send me an email, bro. Like, <laughs> I worked my ass off. So uh, – and, and that's, you know, my whole, my whole thing is just like, you know, it's not even – you know, obviously, I'm emotional about it. You know, how would you not be? But uh, – you know, if, if they didn't know, then then do me a solid, man. Take care of me because I can fight my ass off, dude. And what y'all just saw with me battering that dude's legs until he couldn't walk anymore was me coming off of a long layoff of a severe injury with my knee and only having two weeks to train. So you give me a camp and watch me tear through whatever weight class I decide to be in, whether that's 170 or 155, either one of them, bro, I'm coming. So you never, ever heard from Dana in this, or you never got to meet Connor or say something to him about it? No, I've never had the opportunity, dude. People are like, oh, if you run into him, would you say something? And I'm like, I mean, yeah, probably. I mean, how would you not? Like it's it, like I said, man, I mean, I can understand the business side of it, but I, you also got to see from my side of things, dude. Like, put yourself in my shoes. What would you do? You know, and, it's, and now it's been months. So I'm just out here saying, man, do me a solid, bro. I worked hard. I work hard. Don't forget about me. Right. So it's it's obvious that they did you dirty and you don't know the guys that Connor brought in. It's only two you said, right? Yeah, yeah. That's so that's kind of what I heard is that he brought a couple pros, you know, a couple of his guys within prospects. And I think what happened was from what I heard is one of these guys is was was five and oh. I don't, you know, obviously oh, I guess still five and oh because they're exhibition fights. Hmm. But one of the guys was five and oh. I'm six and oh. A lot of these other guys had deep records. So from my understanding and what I was told from, you know, people that were supposed to know, I got, I got booted for that guy. Essentially I got, you know, the, I got screwed, you know, but if it, you know, it is what it is, man, it sucks. Right. So if, if you could have a phone call with Dana today, somehow, what would you say to him about this situation? Does it even matter now that it's in the past? Do you still want to fight for the UFC? Or is this still a big detriment to you? I know, obviously, it's frustrating, but do you think that this will inf affect your impending UFC career? I mean, here's the thing: is is after that happened, I was really bummed out. You know, I was I was so bummed, dude. I was in a hospital bed for like five days and so much pain, dude. Like honestly, this this staph infection got inside my knee, not on my knee. Like got in it, and I had to have like freaking metal straws jammed into my knee and fluid sucked out dude it was a nightmare like honestly one of the most painful things i've ever been through and uh i was just feeling so low dude and just like man one you know what the hell out of my control once again and uh and then i saw an interview that dana did where in where basically a, a reporter asked him like what about this what you know what the heck how did the, how did this happen to these guys and dana you know seemed like he didn't really know what was going on which i can understand that he's at a point where he probably doesn't hear all the little details you know, and he basically said, yeah, it's Connor. Connor asked for some concessions. We gave them to him. And what, this is a stupid question, because obviously, if, you know, any, these guys that this happened to, you know, we obviously are interested in them and they're going to get there. And they got something coming. They have an opportunity coming. And that just lifted my spirits, dude. I was like, oh, man, like if Dana's saying that I'm not going to be forgotten about, well, dude, I'm going to get healthy and I'm going to be ready. You know what I mean? So th that's that's what I did. And then literally that's that's what you just saw was me getting kind of healthy and battering my way so i could be battering my way in front of a mic so i could have these interviews and this opportunity to talk about this right well that's how i that's how i found you right after your post fight clip after defeating holloway and basically not calling out the ufc but basically yo where's my shot right you're very dominant and they certainly did you dirty um obviously coming off a big win like that you need some recovery and stuff but what's next for you? Do you still want to rack up a couple wins or if somehow Dana called you today and said, yo, hop in the UFC. Is that the immediate goal for you? Dude, if Dana called me and was like fight in the UFC this week, I would, I'd be putting my shorts on and going to practice. 
honestly, dude, like I've always dreamed to be in the UFC. You asked a question earlier about, you know, how does this affect my outlook and things like that? And, you know, looking at the UFC and, you know, at first I was, I was definitely frustrated. Um, but no, dude, like I, I live in Las Vegas, you know, and I've, and I've always dreamed of being in the UFC, you know, and that's for me, uh, still the goal, you know, I still plan on, I, you know, getting into the UFC and having my, having my career there because, you know, I, I believe that the UFC is still the highest talent pool in the world. And I want to fight the best guys in the world. When all said and done, cards laid on the table, I want to say I fought the best the world had to offer. That's why I'm doing this. And I believe that for my weight divisions, that is in the UFC. Because of what Connor did, does it make you dislike Connor at all? Or does it even make you want to? Obviously, everyone wants to fight Connor McGregor for the money. But if you somehow got offered a Connor McGregor fight, would there be bad blood? I mean, I, I I feel like I feel like I'd be I'd be I'd be thrown from the hips a little harder maybe. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, like I said, I I guess it, it's one of these things, dude. Where is it like, uh, am I angry about it? Yeah. Can I understand it? Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people say, oh, it's not personal, it's business. But it's like, dude, it's not personal until it's your business, you know. And then it is personal. And this is fist fighting, you know. So. Uh, the end of all of it, yeah, dude. I mean, fight him just like I'd fight anybody else, man. If, if you're on, to, you know, I, I, yeah. The answer is yeah. If Connor wanted to fight, would I, would I chuck bombs at him? Yeah, I'd chuck bombs at him, dude. I'd be trying to knock him out just like I try to knock out everybody else I fight. I bring the same level of aggression to the cage, whether I like you or not. You know, they don't call me the fight stalker for no reason, right? If you watch my last fight, all that did do, all that dude had to do was look at me funny and try to get in my head, and I was willing to kill both of us. So. <laughs> you know, like Connor, this guy, that guy did me dirty, not did me dirty, dude. When you when they drop that pin, dude, I show up to fight every single time. Well, man, I can feel your energy through the screen. And and honestly, I was telling you before we started recording, I think it's inevitable that you do make it to the UFC because you're such an impressive martial artist. But before I let you go, if I could give you any airtime to say anything to Dana White or the UFC or Connor McGregor, what would you have to say? Dana White respectfully i understand you might have not known about this but this is what's this is what's happened i've worked my whole life to be into in the ufc if you're interested in my story man i've got a crazy story i will be an asset to this company dude and believe me dude i can fight so give me an opportunity that's all i'm asking i'm not asking for any crazy special treatment all i'm asking for is a fight just give me a fight and let me prove to you that i belong in the ufc that's it, man. It's a wrap. They're going to be playing this clip one day when you're headlining an event in the UFC Embedded and all that, and the UFC promos, man. Thank you so much for your time today, Mitch. And, you know, I really hope to see you in the UFC soon. And, I mean, hopefully that's what your next fight's going to be. But regardless, you know, you deserve all the uh, all the fans and eyes you can get. And as I said before, it's inevitable before you're in the best promotion in the world. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Ramirez. You're the man.